gonna challenge myself to not do any shopping or anything treat yourself this month. I don't want to call it a no buy because that feels a bit restrictive, but I'm really going to challenge myself not to buy anything. Hi everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing another segment of my money diary series. We are looking back in the month of January to see how we did with our budget, as well as resetting our finances for the upcoming month of February. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Frieza. I talk all things personal finances. So if you want to see more of that, then make sure you're subscribed down below. The way that I want to structure this money diaries video is I'm going to be taking you through my income for the month, how much I saved, how much I spent in terms of my personal fixed bills. And then we also talk about my small business bills and then we'll get into my variable expenses. And finally, we will reset for the month of Feb. I just want to show you guys the tracker that I use. So this is my budget tracker. This is actually from The Line, which is my stationery company. I have been using this tracker for the last two years now and I just created this one as like a fresh new sheet for 2024 and I did some tweaks because there is a section here for debt and I don't have any debt right now so I changed that section from debt to small business bills and I feel like that is a little bit more relevant for me because I want to start to track how much I spend for my small business that is what I'm going to be referencing today. I will have this link down below if you guys are interested. I also have a 10% code for all of my subscribers. So I will put that up on the screen. But yeah, let's just get into January. Before we kind of get started, I wanted to just give some context because I feel like it's a brand new year. It's the first month of the year. And I just kind of want to give context so that you guys all kind of know where my income is coming from, what I'm spending on, etc. So if you're not new to the channel, you might already know this. But if you are new to the channel, I do have a corporate nine to five job. I work in the e-commerce industry. I've been in this industry for a better part of a decade now. And I feel like I have like progressed in my career a little bit. So that is my main source of income. And then a second source of income is my business. Although I don't take anything from my business, I reinvest everything back. So you'll see in my income summary that I don't put that as a line item because that's not money that I'm going to be spending for myself. And then the third income stream I have is YouTube. So I did start YouTube back in March of last year and I joined the partner program back in June. Ever since then, I started monetizing my videos and it's not a lot. It's not enough to quit my nine to five job or anything like that, but that is another stream of income. So you will see that as a line item here in my income summary. So with all that context, let's talk about my income. I was expecting around $5,200, which is $2,600 bi-weekly. And I actually just made that. I think this month I did overshoot my income. It does fluctuate because of things like taxes and all of that stuff. So I think in terms of expected, I might bring that down for the next coming months. And instead of putting 2,600, I might just put 2,500 or maybe even less because as you can see, I made less than 2,600 in my second paycheck. So in terms of my corporate job, I did earn $5,241.57. This is for the most part guaranteed every single month. And I'm able to kind of plan my life around how much I'm expecting to make for my nine to five job. So that is how much I made this month. And then the next line item I have is YouTube. I don't put anything under the expected portion of this budget tracker because I never really know how much to expect. And also I'm not really expecting money from YouTube. Anything from YouTube is more of a nice to have. I actually have a separate account for my YouTube where all of my YouTube paychecks go and I haven't spent a dime from YouTube ever since I started earning. So I kind of just want to build that up and see how much it will build up to. But last month I actually had the biggest paycheck I've ever had from YouTube, which is $211.09. That brings up my total to $5,452.66 sense in terms of my income for this month. As I mentioned, my small business income is not in here because that is completely separate. The next thing I want to talk about is my savings. So I have an emergency fund and I also kind of started a mortgage sinking fund, which truthfully hasn't really been working for me, but we'll get to that. So for my emergency fund, I am putting down $100 every single paycheck, which is currently at Walt Simple right now. Walt Simple is giving 4%, which is the highest interest rate I've seen in terms of a high yield savings account. So I recently switched into Walt Simple. I used to be 
with EQ Bank and they were only giving like 2.25%, I think. I'll leave a link to Wealth Simple down below if you guys want to check that out. And if you were thinking of moving your savings into a high yield savings account, I do recommend Wealth Simple. And then I wanted to start a like mortgage sinking fund. Although I did put down $500 in there, I kind of feel like it was a bit of a stretch. I mean, as you can see, I already have so many expenses that I just couldn't take out that extra $500. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing this for next month, but I wanted to try. So yeah, this month I saved $700. And then going into my investments really quickly. So I do have a tax-free savings account with Wealth Simple, and that is invested. Right now I have allocated $300 bi-weekly into this account and I invest $600 into this account in January. And then talking about my bill payments. So I'll kind of run through these pretty quickly because I feel like you guys can read through them, but I'll just touch on a couple things. So obviously Spotify is always there. We've got a storage unit that my partner and I rent. We have our maintenance fee. Our maintenance fee, this is new this month. We didn't have a maintenance fee when we didn't own our place, but now that we do, we have to pay for the maintenance fee and it's around like 500 something. And this is split between my partner and I. So my half is $256. We also pay for BC Hydro, $123.75. It's a little bit higher because we've been using the heat quite a bit. And then my first mortgage payment for this year was $813. So we do bi-weekly payments for our mortgage. And again, this is split between my partner and I. 813 for me 813 from him and that is just for the first half of the month and then we'll see it again in the latter half of the month i also have a car payment again this is split with my partner and i i pay 413 dollars and 51 cents monthly we pay for internet i've got apple tv i also have an apple storage icbc insurance this is for our car and then we also have a home insurance this is split between my partner and i got an american express membership this is a cobalt card that i have this is 13 dollars monthly as i mentioned there is an another mortgage payment that comes out at the second half of the month. So that is again, $813 for myself. And then the last couple things here is Kindle Unlimited. And then I have a TD service charge. This is the bank. So in terms of my personal bills, I paid $2,715.04. These are just the things that I have to pay for, I guess, to live on a monthly basis. And we're not done yet. In the bottom section of my budget tracker, I changed the debt section into business fixed bills. This is more so to track all of the things that I pay for out of my business account. I do run Google ads. That was $156.93. I've got a Google workspace that is $835. I mentioned this in the video that I just filmed that I started to outsource my email and social media marketing. So that was $1,297.80 for the month, which is a lot. This is new. I'm trying it out to see if it will be worth it. And it's been going great so far, I would say, and I might do another month, but it's just a really big expense and we'll see how it goes throughout the year. I also did a sponsored video with a creator here on YouTube. That was 550. I've got a FreshBooks account. This is where I do my accounting. That was $13 monthly. I've got Audible here, although it should probably be in the personal expenses category. Don't know why I moved it down, but that was $16.74. I've got my phone bill under here because I do pay for my phone bill through my business account because I use it for social media and all of that. So that is $73.45. I've got Adobe Creative Cloud, which is $43.76. That allows me to use Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro, which is how I edit videos. And then Klaviyo, which is $110. This is my email marketing platform. And honestly, this is a lot of money. And I think that's why I wanted to outsource my emails because I feel like I wasn't making use out of my email marketing platform as much as I could have and I'm paying so much. So yeah, it's expensive to to own a business. But good thing these are all coming out of my business account and not my personal account. And then the last one is Canva. I don't remember switching over to Canva yearly, but I guess I did at some point because I kind of got a surprise bill in my inbox saying that I got charged $149 for Canva for the entire year which makes sense because I do use Canva almost every day. And it was just a really large bill that I was like, oh, that is a lot, but it means that I won't have to pay for Canva monthly. Those are all of my business fixed bills. There is 
a lot of them and the total comes to $394.81. If you guys want a video around how to run a small business and how much it all costs, I'm happy to make a separate video all about that. And then we get into my expenses. This was a very expensive month. There's many reasons why, so I'll touch on a couple things. So you will see up on the screen here that there is a lot of red in this chart. What that means is that I didn't really budget properly for these things or I just overspent. I will walk you through some of the notable ones. So dining out, I'm over by $109.67. We did dine out a lot in Vancouver. It's actually not even dining out, it's more so just takeout. I think we need to honestly do a little bit of a better job cooking at home. It's just that cooking just takes so long. And when you're tired at the end of a work day, you just, that's the last thing that you wanna do. So I don't wanna make that as an excuse, but I do think that I could be a little bit better about cooking at home and getting groceries. The next thing I'm over is groceries. So it's not like we haven't been doing groceries. Spent a lot on food this month, I guess, but that is over by $31.50. Next category, which I'm way over because I didn't budget anything for this category is home. And that's mostly because I didn't know that it was coming. Well, I did know that it was coming. It was just that I didn't know the timing per se. So as you know, we did buy our home, the one that we were living in for the last three years and during these three years we've been really saying that we want to change the blinds and that was the very first thing on the list to be updated or changed because the blinds are they're not broken but they need an update or a refresh so we've been reaching out to a couple local places here who who do blinds in Vancouver and we finally landed on one they did the measurements this month and did order new blinds to replace the ones in our solarium and in the office which obviously I didn't budget for this and that's why I'm over by over a thousand dollars. I did take some money from my emergency fund to pay for this. Personal care I'm very proud of. I'm kind of right on the money there. And then shopping. What did I buy here? I bought some stuff at Lululemon and they didn't budget for this. I kind of want to do a bit of a like no buy month or like no shop month. I never want to like restrict myself if it's something that I absolutely need, like obviously I'm gonna get it. And I find that when I do things like a no spend or a no buy, as soon as that is done, it makes me just like splurge on all the things the following week or month or whatever. So that's kind of why I hesitate to do a no buy or a no spend. Let me know down below if you guys have any experience doing a no buy or, or no spend week or month or whatever. I would love to know down below. The next category is snow snowboarding sessions up in Whistler and Cyprus. I'm a little bit annoyed with snowboarding right now and I'll tell you why. I went up to Cyprus a couple weeks ago and someone took my snowboard. I had a snowboard that I probably should have locked but I never lock it anytime I just use the restroom because there's just so many snowboards out that aren't locked that I'm like no one's gonna take this. Like my snowboard isn't anything special and I guess I must have put it in a place where someone also left the exact same board but different bindings in the exact same area. So when and I came back literally less than five minutes. I grabbed the board that I thought was mine and I started walking towards the lifts and I realized that these weren't my bindings and I was like wait this is not my board it's exactly my board but it's a little bit taller. So at first glance it looks like my board but it's not and I guess someone must have thought that my board was theirs and they just took it. So they ended up leaving Cyprus and I was stuck with their board and I was just so annoyed because obviously this board isn't configured to me. It's a little bit taller. I tried to use it or I did use it in Whistler over the weekend and it just wasn't feeling the same. I probably have to sell that one and buy a new board that will actually fit me, but I'm just a little bit annoyed because I'm like, why? Did that happen and now I have to buy a new board and I really don't want to spend any more money on gear for snowboarding because I spent so much already over the last couple years. But anyway, that's a little bit of a story time about snowboarding. The last thing I want to talk about is the treat yourself category. So this month I bought myself a designer handbag and that is the Row Margot. If you haven't watched that unboxing, I will leave it up in the cards and in the description down below. So that was obviously a very expensive purchase. And at the same time, I had also recently purchased a new card holder from Celine. Again, the unboxing for that will be linked in the description down below. If you wanna know why I bought those two things, I do go into that in those two videos. So I won't go over it here, but I spent $7,405.60. 
Someone asked me in the comments if I do a sort of like savings or sinking fund for this. I did use my savings to buy these two things. I feel like I want to do a bit of a sinking fund video of like how to start a sinking fund, especially for things like this. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that. But yeah, I use my savings for these. In total, I spent $9,603.94. And that's primarily because of the handbag and the new wallet. And that is far off from what I thought I would spend this month. So yeah, I don't have any excuses. That is the reality of my finances for January. Okay, let's talk about what is going on in Feb. So in terms of my income, nothing really too much has changed. As I mentioned, I'm lowering down my expected to 2,500 for my corporate job bi-weekly. And then I also don't really budget anything for YouTube. So expected income is $5,000. And then for my savings, I am putting down $100 into my emergency fund. And I took out the mortgage sinking fund because I just feel like that wasn't working for me. So total savings is going to be $200 for Feb. And then in terms of my investments, I'm putting down $300 bi-weekly. So total $600 for my investments in my Walt Simple account. And then for my bill payments, nothing has really changed here. Everything has remain the same as what I went through in January. So the total that I am expecting to pay is $2,760.29. Going into my business fix bills, I do have something exciting to share with you guys here. So I will get to that at the end of this. I'm stopping Google ads in February because I wanna just pause and think about my paid ad strategy instead of just continuing to put money in there. I just wanna make sure that I'm really making use of the money that I I'm investing into paid ads, so I'm putting a pause on that for now. As I mentioned, I am gonna continue with email and social media marketing. This is $1,500. We'll do one sponsored video again for this month, which is $550. And then the new little item that I wanna talk about is Office. Okay, sorry, my camera died, but I think we were talking about the office space for my business. So I have been thinking about growing and expanding my business. And right now, I don't know if many people know this, but I run my small business out of my small den in my one bedroom apartment. And I have really made use of that space, but I feel like to grow and scale the business, I need to move into a space that will allow me to do that. And I have been looking for an office space to lease here in Vancouver, and I actually just sent the email today that I am going to be moving forward with a space. I toured this space last week and I fell in love. I'm really excited for this next step and next chapter of my business. And I just feel like this office space is going to unlock so much that I don't even know yet. So I'm really excited for this. I really wanna bring you guys along the behind the scenes of getting this place and furnishing it and all of that and bringing it to life. So please stay tuned for that. And then in terms of my variable expenses, I am keeping everything the same except for home. I'm actually gonna budget for the blinds this month because I know that that is gonna be coming. So I put $1,100 under the home category. Gonna challenge myself to not do any shopping or anything treat yourself this month. It's not really a no buy. It's mostly just like a bit of a challenge. Like I don't want to call it a no buy because that feels a bit restrictive, but I'm really going to challenge myself not to buy anything. So I'll let you guys know how that goes at the end of the month. My total for variable expenses is $1,975. So that is it. That is my February reset. There is a lot to look forward to for this upcoming month. I'm really excited about the office space. I know that that is also gonna cost a lot to start to furnish that place. And the other thing that I'm really excited about is getting our new blinds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports the channel. Let me know how you guys are feeling about your finances. How did you do with your January budget? I would love to know in the comments down below. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye you guys. Mm -hmm.